Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at lesson 11.4. And actually, we're going to take this lesson, we're going to break it up into two parts. So in this video, we're going to be focusing on just the first half, which the ultimate goal is for us to understand this concept called the factor theorem. Essentially, what the factor theorem is going to do for us is it's going to give us a purpose behind all that factoring that we were doing earlier. So if you have not watched the videos, if you have not uh, learned how to factor a polynomial yet, you want to make sure that you know how to do that before watching this video. Because otherwise, when we get to that portion of this lesson, you're going to have a lot of difficulty. But before we even get to that, let's review some terminology so then that way we can understand this lesson all the more better. First off, we have these two terms, zeros and roots. Remember that a zero and a root are the same as the x-intercepts of a polynomial, the x-intercept from a graph of a polynomial. And the factors of a polynomial are connected to its zeros. How so? Well, recall that a product of numbers is always going to be zero as long as one of the numbers is zero, which gives us the zero product theorem. Now, this seems like complete common sense. Because, of course, if you multiply a number times zero, it's going to be zero. Well, we can use that idea of common sense to help us out with solving equations when we have those equations factored. Because what this zero product theorem basically is telling us is if we have a factor, let's call it A, and another factor called, we'll call that B, and we have those two multiplied together equaling zero, well, either that first factor, A, could be equal to zero, or that second factor, B, could also be equal to zero. So we can set those factors equal to zero, solve for x, and we have our zeros, or we have our factors, or we have our roots of the polynomial. It's going to make a lot more sense when we look at some examples. So let's do that. Let's look at this example here, and then we'll move on to that factor theorem. Okay, so looking at this example, we have x times the quantity 20 minus 2x times the quantity 16 minus 2x. So that is the factored form for the volume of a box here. That would be, for in standard form, it would be 4x cubed minus 72x squared plus 320x. So we're going to find the zeros of this polynomial. So again, the first step would be to find the factored form, which they've done for us. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take each of those factors and set them equal to 0. So starting with this first one, we would just have x equals 0. The second factor would be 20 minus 2x, so we're going to set that equal to 0. And then we do the same thing with the other one, 16 minus 2x. Set that equal to 0. So to find the zeros, well, this first one, we don't have to do anything for, so that's we, but we can't overlook it. So one of the zeros of this polynomial would be when x is 0. So for this next one, though, I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. That's one way we could do that. Or you could add 2x to both sides. It doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer. But then when I divide by negative 2, I get x equals 10. So another factor, another zero, I should, another zero I should say for this polynomial would be where x equals 10. Do the same thing for the next factor. Subtract 16 from both sides. And I would get negative 2x equals negative 16. Solve for x, and I get 8. So my zeros here would be at 0. 10, and 8. So now, let's look at this next one. The next one, they don't give us the equation written out, but they give us this diagram. And from that diagram, we can get the factored form. The factored form would just be x, 24 minus 2x, and the other length is also 24 minus 2x. So when we go to find the zeros for this one, we just set each of these factors, again, equal to 0. Now you'll notice with this one that 24 minus 2x is repeated twice. So we only have to list it once. So when I solve this one, I get negative 2x equals negative 24. Solve for x, and we get 12. So the zeros for this polynomial would be at 0 and 12. So in the context of the story problem for both of these, since both of these are referring to volumes of boxes, the idea here is that when x, or the length of the square as far as the corner that we would come out, cut out from each uh, corner of the 
rectangular piece of paper or cardboard or whatever it would be, if any of those lengths were these values, obviously if we had cut out a length of zero, it would just be a flat box, so it would have a volume of zero. But the other two numbers for that first example and this one, the, the 12, are significant because if we were to cut out a side length of 10 from each corner of the box, we'd have a volume of zero. Same thing with eight, with that first example. With the second example, if we cut out um, a square of each, on each side that had a length of side length 12, it would end up having a volume of zero. So that's what the significance of that means. Well, that brings us to this factor theorem. So we can use what we did in 11.3 with factoring to be able to uh, find those zeros of a polynomial. So what the factor theorem states, and this is really important that you get this in your notes and that you understand this, is that x minus r is a factor of a polynomial as long as a polynomial is set equal to 0. And r is a factor of p. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at an equation here. So it says find the roots by factoring. So we want to figure out what those roots are. So we're going to factor this just like we did back in 11.3. So again, if you have not done the, uh, if you watch those videos, if you've not learned how to factor yet, you want to make sure you know how to do that. Because otherwise it's going to make this a little bit more difficult. So remember the first step is to always look for a GCF, a greatest common factor, which both of these have. So let's look at this first example together. I'm going to factor out a 2x from here. Oops, 2x. So when I do that, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so this will be 3x squared because we factor out an x. 16 divided by 2 is 8, and we factor out an x, so that will be 8x. Minus, and then 6 divided by 2 would be 3, and we factor out an x, so that just stays minus 3. So now the technique that I use to factor these trinomials is called the x-box method. So if you haven't learned how to do that, again, you want to watch the video. So I'm going to draw an x. I'm going to draw my box. And over here in my box, I'll put my 3x squared and my minus 3. Here in the top part of the x, I'll put the 8x. I'm going to multiply 3x squared times negative 3, and that gives me negative 9x squared. So I'm trying to look to for, for two numbers that multiply together to be negative 9x squared. Same two numbers add up to be 8x. Think about it for a second. Again, two numbers that multiply together to be neg negative 9x squared. Same two numbers add together to be 8x. Hopefully it came up with negative x and 9x. Because negative x times 9x is negative 9x squared. Negative x plus 9x is 8x. So let's put those over here. Again, it doesn't matter which box you put them in. And now we're going to find the greatest common factor from each row and from each column. So in this first row, we would have an x that we would factor out and a 3 from down here. And in this column, we would factor out a 3x. Remember, if the first piece you come across is negative, the trick here is you've got to remember to factor out a negative, so this would be negative 1. Now when I multiply these together, just to double check, x times 3x is 3x squared, x times negative 1 is negative x, 3 times 3x is 9x, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So now the key here is when we write this in factored form, do not forget about this 2x, this greatest common factor that we had at the beginning. So that factors down to be 3x minus 1 and x plus 3. So remember, our goal here is to find the roots by factoring. So now we have the factors. Now we've got to find out what the roots are. So we're going to set each of these equal to 0. So we take the 2x, set that equal to 0. Well, that's obviously going to be just 0 when I divide both sides by 2. 3x minus 1, I'm going to set that equal to 0. So I would add 1 to both sides and divide by 3, which gives me a positive 1 third x plus 3, set that equal to 0. I would just subtract 3 from both sides, and I get x equals negative 3. So those are the roots, or zeros, of that polynomial. 0, 1 third, and negative 3. So now that you've had a chance to do a few of these together, uh, I want you guys to do this next one on your own. Please do not skip to the next two, because those are going to be a little bit trickier. But I want you to pause the video now, and I want you to work on this example. And when you're ready to check your answer, please press play to make sure that you have it correct. 
Okay, let's see how you did here. So your first step should have been to look for a greatest common factor, and hopefully you discovered that x was your greatest common factor. So when you factor that out, we get 8x squared minus 22x plus 5. Now don't forget, though, we're going to use that x later on, so don't forget about that one x that we factored out. Okay, so the next step, we would factor this down. So if you use, if you use my method, the x-box method, we'd draw our x in our box, put negative 22x in the top part of your x, multiply the 8x squared and the 5, and we get 40x squared, put that in the bottom part of our x, and the 8x squared and the 5 goes in our box. Now if we want to figure out what two numbers multiply together to be 40x squared, and same two numbers add together to be negative 22x. Hopefully you came up with negative 2x and negative 20x. Put those over here in your box. And let's look for the greatest common factors. So the greatest common factors end up being 4x minus 1 and 2x minus 5. So when we put this in factored form, again, you don't want to forget about that x. So it would be x times 4x minus 1 times 2x minus 5. Set each of those equal to 0 and to get our roots. So our first root, or our first 0, would be that x would equal 0. Set the 4x minus 1 equal to 0, add 1, and divide by 4, and we get 1 fourth. Set 2x minus 5 equal to 0, add 5, divide by 2, and we get 5 halves. So let's move on to these last two examples. Now remember the first step is to always look for a greatest common factor. And you might think, well, the first term here is an x to the fourth, so there must be something I can factor out. But the 36 doesn't have an x. So there's no greatest common factor here. It does look different from what we've seen. But that same process that we've used, that xbox method, can be used here. Let me show you. So let's start by drawing our x. And then our box. And in our box, or I'm sorry, in our, yeah, in our box, we'll put the x to the fourth and the 36. Over in our x, we'll put the negative 13x squared. x to the fourth times 36 is 36x to the fourth. So I'm trying to find two numbers that multiply together to be a positive 36x to the fourth. Same two numbers add together to be a negative 13x squared. So if you think about the factors of 36, hopefully you're thinking of the fact that they both have to be negative because when they multiply together, they're a positive number. When we add them together, it's a negative number. And we come up with negative 9x squared and negative 4x squared. Now, it's really important to include the x's here. I know some people get lazy, and they don't include the x's. because They just think, oh, well, I'll just remember them. But with these, it's really, really important because these are x squareds. Because negative 9x squared times negative 4x squared is a 36x to the fourth. And these, when we add together, we get negative 13x squared. So let's put these over in the box, so negative 9x squared and negative 4x squared. Let's look for our greatest common factors now. So the GCF in this first row would be just an x squared. In the second row, remember it's a negative number that we start out with, so we have to factor out a negative. And between the 4 and 36, the greatest common factor is 4. Let's look at this first column. The first column, we would have a GCF of x squared. The second column, it would be negative, and it would be a negative 9. Now double check, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times negative 9 is negative 9x squared. Negative 4 times x squared is negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times negative 9 is a positive 36. So we didn't have a GCF here to remember, but we have these factors. So it factors down to be x squared minus 9 and x squared minus 4. Now, I really hope that you remember from factoring that we have some special cases, and these are both special cases where they are differences of two squares. Because we could take the square root of both of these, the x squared and the 9. So this first factor can continue to be factored to be x plus 3 times x minus 3. The other one can be factored to be x plus 2 and x minus 2. So if I set each of these equal to 0, we would get our zeros. When I set this first one equal to 0, I would get negative 3. The second one would give me positive 3. The third one would give me negative 2. And the last one would be a positive 2. So we could write it like that, or you could write it as plus or minus 3 and plus or minus 2. So those would be your zeros. 
The next one's very similar, so why don't you guys take a minute to try that one on your own. Again, just like you did previously, please pause the video at this point and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, so let's see how you did here. So again, you should have looked for a GCF, but there is none for this problem. So when we put this in the X box, we would start out with this. And again, looking to see what two numbers multiply together to be 100X to the fourth. Same two numbers add together to be negative 29X squared. Seems like it'd be difficult, but hopefully you came up with this negative 4X squared and negative 25X squared. Put those over in your box. Look for the greatest common factor for each row and column, and this is what you should have gotten. Remember, remember there was no greatest common factor, so when we put this in factored form, it would just be X squared minus 25 and X squared minus 4. And then you recognize that these are both special cases, so these are both differences of two squares, so these can both be factored further. The first one can be factored to be X plus 5 times X minus 5, the second to be X plus 2 and X minus 2. Set each of those equal to 0 and solve for X to find the zeros or to find the roots, and you get negative 5, 5, negative 2, whoops, and that should be a positive 2. And the other way that you could write this is you could write it as plus or minus 5 and plus or minus 2. Well, there you have it. We are, this is where we're going to end the first part of Lesson 11.4. So hopefully you have an understanding now of how we can use factoring to be able to find the zeros, which are also the roots or the x-intercepts of a polynomial. So good luck now as you work on your assignment, and then make sure to watch the second half of 11.4 to learn the rest of what we need to know for this section.